I'm Ugi Nurhani from Indonesian Print Media Association. Digitalization is something that we cannot resist today, including in business, in publishing, and printing. Print on demand will be more common in this one to two years. By doing print on demand, the publisher will get a lot of benefits, such as a lower cost for book stocks and storage. The printer will get print order from publishing as where the location close to the customer. CNC will be the profitable gain value for this model of business. So from the customer to the publisher, to the printers and back to the customer are the new model for future business cycle. Print on demand can be done only through the digital printing machine. Sheet or web print digital are getting sophisticated and cheaper in price, also the production cost. The customer will get a lot of advantage through the scheme of this kind of business. So I hope Indonesia will soon accepting this new trend in publishing and printing business. By hearing the presentation from HP, we will be enhanced by the new technology, what the printer can do. We cannot refuse modernization. Digital is the future of the, and we shall follow it. Thank you very much, and enjoy the seminar. Thank you, Pak Mugi, and thank you so much for the introduction uh, and for the opportunity to be here. Thank you, uh, Laura, Ms. Prinslow, for the invitation as well. We appreciate the opportunity to present um, this morning. So I'm uh, I'm here. Uh, my name is Rick Bravo. I'm with the um, Inkjet division of HP's PWI business. Uh, along with me is my colleague Sun Young uh, Yoon, uh, who is part of our uh, um, Asia Pacific um, Publishing uh, Division. And today we're going to share just a few minutes about the things that we're doing inside of publishing. Got a great story for you. Um, if we can go ahead and jump to the first slide, uh, this is really what our vision is about publishing in 2020. Obviously. Um, this world uh, and this year looked a lot different than probably what a lot of us thought it would look like beginning in January. So uh, I believe we need to jump back to the first slide. Um, but like I said, uh, my role inside of HP, I've been with the company now for about seven years. Um, and for the past few years, I've had uh, kind of two roles inside of the business. So we can go ahead and jump to the next slide. Um, and the first one is, is that I do business development uh, covering Asia Pacific um, and Japan, as well as Latin America. And secondly, for the past year, what, uh, what I've been working on um, is specifically uh, publishing segment management. So, and that means talking to a lot of different publishers and different printers, um, different players across the, the entire value chain of publishing um, around the world. So I hope that by spending a couple of minutes together, we can look at some of the things that HP's doing um, in terms of technology. We're a technology company at our core. Um, and our vision is about, and our mission is about bringing technology that enhances the world um, and makes it a better place um, for every single person um, on the planet. So why don't we go ahead and we can, we can jump ahead uh, now two slides. And we'll, and by the way, uh, hello from San Diego, California. I know that um, as we're filming this, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, question about what's going on in the US. Um, certainly we'll get to the, uh, we'll see the outcome of the election here, um, hopefully by the time this airs. Um, looking back at publishing in the market, we really see a number of key trends, um, but when we think about book publishing, I wanna focus on, on three, especially in the time of COVID. And the first one um, is the rise of e-commerce and how sales have moved online. Uh, overall, what we've seen in the industry is that um, as the consumers have shifted the way that they are um, discovering, uh, um, discovering books and ordering, uh, publishing and publishing uh, sales channels have had to change. Um, and this is uh, through the rise of things like um, Amazon, Alibaba, JD.com in, in, in China. Uh, and so publishers are having to adapt to this industry 4.0 uh, model um, as these e-commerce um, portals um, have adapted to, to take advantage of those changing consumer behaviors. But secondly, um, and more, uh, more to the point is that 
with COVID, there was the disruption of retail, uh, traditional retail um, bookstores as the options uh, for, for consumers to go and actually get their books. Um, and so this drove sellers to look for alternatives. And so we've seen a wide range of um, adoption of e-commerce. So uh, we, we heard India that it used to be only 10% of sales were online uh, and 90% were through traditional channels. And that model has flipped um, entirely where almost 90% of all uh, sales had to uh, go through online through, through companies like Flipkart. So we're seeing a massive um, change, definitely accelerated by COVID in terms of the way that um, e-commerce is impacting global publishing. The second um, big trend also uh, well, accelerated by COVID is the changing modalities between um, digital uh, content and physical content. So, and when I say digital, I'm meaning um, audiobooks and eBooks, right? Whether people are reading on tablet or whether people are listening to podcasts or listening to audiobooks, um, there with the with the rise of different options. Um, we're seeing different impacts in, in, in each of kind of the different sub-segments. So education has already been moving to blended where there's a, there's, there's a need for both a physical book um, where students uh, engage with because of better outcomes, but there's also um, as content becomes more available um, and more prevalent by publishers, uh, it's being adopted. And certainly the, I think COVID was one of the big opportunities um, for digital content. Uh, in education, and that has what we've heard is that's met with mixed results so far. I think we'll, we'll still we'll get a lot of feedback on on um, how publishers did and how uh, school systems did in managing uh, the access to digital content and what the impact of that was on students around the world. Uh, if we've seen um, definitely in the changing modalities is also um, impacted in in the STM space. We know that open access continues to drive print down uh, in the developed world, but we see that there's still pockets of needs for physical books um, uh, in different different country-specific markets. Trade remains, um, we definitely saw a, we've heard that there's there's an uptick in, in e-books and audio growing rapidly. Um, whether that's gonna maintain um, that trend post-COVID, uh, we'll, we'll still look for. Um, the last thing is we see continued consolidation optimization across the supply chain. Um, this is this is because, as we know, as runs get shorter and as um, uh, SLAs get shorter, uh, the whole um, the whole ordering of books uh, in quantities have changed, and so we continue to see active uh, consolidation um, from traditional printers and from digital printers um, around the world. Uh, we, we've seen a number of U.S. and U.K. printers uh, that have gone through bankruptcy and through exits, um, and this has only been accelerated by the rise of POD and a number of businesses um, uh, taking on POD as an alternative um, and reshoring jobs from China um, as well. So as we see book sales moving online, we, we expect this to be a continued trend for a number of years to come. Um, so what do we see as HP, um, and why are we why are we so uh, interested in, in this market? If we go to the next slide. It's really because we see that there's a big opportunity in book production. Uh, and if we go through the next slide, what we'll see is that the the expected growth in digitally printed books, and when I say digitally printed, I mean through inkjet or through toner, um, is that between uh, 2020 and 2025 over the next five years, it's going to more than double, about uh, two and almost two and a half times the size of digitally printed books are expected um, to be produced. And this is because the number of titles continues to grow. We know that book orders are are continuing to grow. We know that ebooks um, uh, are playing a part in this, but really it's, there's increased demand for by publishers to print digitally. Um, and Again, COVID's only accelerating this. We see this um, uh, not, uh, uh, it's not, it's not unique to any particular country, uh, especially as, as publishers have delayed um, uh, production of titles and shifted the, the timelines of when they want them produced. That has only put increased pressure on supply chains to deliver um, books in, short, um, in shorter times and in shorter quantities. And really the only way to do that is with digital. Um, let me go ahead and jump to the next slide. Uh, 
Um, so the next thing, uh, why is why is digital good for publishers? It's good for both the top and the bottom line. The first thing is that it saves costs on how jobs as the um, how they're run. Uh, the inkjet and toner are considerably cheaper than offset, um, and we know that we can run copy counts of up to ten thousand jobs. So shifting from from um, traditional um, production into digital production uh, is is a good way for publishers to save costs on running jobs. But secondly, it also allows them to do things that they haven't weren't able to do before. Specifically, it's reacting faster to trends, right? If we looked at just the Google search, uh, Google Trends search for pandemic books before March 1st, there was almost no interest in buying a, a book on pandemics. But as a topic became trending or became relevant, um, this is an opportunity for publishers to, to get their content out to um, out to the market much faster without having to carry inventory, right? If they're able to print it digitally, and this this is obviously supported through through e-commerce channels, online platform, web infrastructure, etc. Um, if we can go forward to the next slide, you know, from our position as HP, we've been in this market now for about ten years, uh, and we are the leader in this market. We've we've printed over two hundred fifty billion A4 pages. We're number one in inkjet um, publishing, and we do this because we're um, we're printing in 18 countries around the world with over 50 uh, print service providers, so 50 different um, customers producing books for us today. So we uh, we speak from a position of leadership and from insight, um, having done this for a number of years, and we hope to do it in Indonesia here as well uh, soon. Uh, allow me just to spend a couple minutes um, just talking about one initiative uh, that HP did during COVID, um, and that is our HP Piazza Cafe Turn to Learn. If we can go to the next slide. Uh, and this is about this was about tr um, trying to meet a need in, in the middle of this um, challenging time. Um, it, the idea here was to enable better learning outcomes for students that were impacted by not having access to material. So if we can go to the next slide. Um, this was really the first thing that we saw that when schools closed and and, and millions of students were unprepared for um, remote learning, School districts were scrambling to meet uh, getting materials to, to students, and especially the ones that were at risk, um, that 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 their parents were there working, um, and we wanted to make sure that they didn't fall behind. And so we the we saw the opportunity to partner with um, members throughout the value chain, with with publishers, with printers, um, with um, fulfillment, in order to get content um, into students' hand. And so what we wanted to do was to empower teachers to teach students to learn by providing equal access, making sure that this content was available at, at low to no cost. Um, but also, this delivers on HP's um, unique uh, um, uh, uh, mission. Um, and we believe that we had the right solutions in terms of both software, um, content management, and uh, hardware in terms of print production in order to meet this need. So we'll go to the next slide. We did this by um, by working on an infrastructure that we'd already built. Um, this was was called Piazza Cafe, and what it is is a content repository um, in which uh, publishers were able to upload their content um, and have it ready and, and available for school districts to pick from, um, uh, teachers to pick from. They could pick which content they wanted to to to, to have printed and then ship directly to students. Um, and so the response, uh, we, we partnered with um, publishers like uh, Britannica, NASA, uh, NASA, Scholastic, Time for Kids. Um, and then with our partner, or one of our partners inside the U, uh, US, who is Command Web, they were able to print all of this material um, from this cloud-based uh, content repository with, uh, with a cloud-based um, workflow solution um, that allowed them to, to do it in small uh, quantities, do it quickly, and then have it shipped directly to school districts in order to be um, rolled out. We can go to the next slide. The result of this was that we were able to respond uh, and print about 230,000 booklets to, uh, to students across um, the US, Haiti, and Canada. Um, we were able to do this, as you can see here, uh, through a number of different school districts. And we really want to thank our partners, um, various publishers like NASA and Time, and and, and and our printers like Command Web for, for offering to do this in order to really support students um, in such a difficult time. Um, and so uh, with that, I want to say thank you for, for allowing me to spend a couple minutes just talking about our solutions uh, inside of 
um, our inkjet division. And with that, I want to hand it over to my colleague, Sun Young, to talk about some of the things going, great work that's going on inside our Indigo division. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Rick. Uh, let me talk about a little bit more about new opportunities with digital, uh, mostly printed on Indigo, but these are mainly by uh, not not by our customers. Uh, our customer customers usually mostly uh, publishers in in the world. Uh, so I like to develop these kind of opportunities with digital in Indonesia and the region as well. Let me introduce uh, to me a little bit about I'm leading a Southeast Asia and commercial, a Korea commercial business in uh, HP for uh, Indigo and PWI business. Next uh, slide, please. Uh, let me start with uh, versioning first. There are uh, many uh, uh, creative applications our customers and publishers are developing on Indigo. Main uh, majority of these are quite burgeoning and also personalization for books. So let me start with Mantura Lingua. This is a UK based publisher who are uh, helping your children learn a new language. So these books are basically in written with two different languages over 50 titles, uh, over uh, 17 languages available. So these are quite a new way of, uh, and also low cost way of learning languages in classrooms and family. Uh, can I move to the next page? Another uh, example of a mix of versioning and personalization, I will uh, uh, explain a little more about Wonderly later. This is uh, Wonderly Studio. This is uh, what they built a uh, third party to create their own personalized books. This is a platform for uh, everybody to create their own. Uh, and also uh, funded by uh, Google and Ravensburger in uh, uh, Germany. Uh, for toys and games. So uh, first book, uh, Google uh, funded uh, one W Studio works were uh, Keys and Curious, four different versions uh, for official Harry Potter uh, pen clubs to create their own images and names. And this was created by Harry Potter fans in, uh, in the world. Another uh, application, if I go to the next page, I like to uh, explain a little more about Wonderbly. This is a UK-based publisher who are uh, leading uh, in the world for uh, personalized children books. Very successful now. They start with one specific title, which is The Lost My Name in the middle. But they now have uh, uh, more than 20 different titles not only their own new titles to create your own uh, personalized books, also working with traditional publishers like, for example, My Golden Ticket. This is Charlie Wonka's story uh, for, for uh, your uh, children's own uh, adventure for their own chocolate uh, factory. Also now become a very, very uh, best-selling children's book in, in the world. And they are also offer uh, free shipping to everywhere. They are working with uh, many of HP customers with Indigo uh, in different locations, UK and also uh, US and Asia. Can I move to uh, next application? This is another example of personalized books for everybody. The book of everyone. This is unique personalized book uh, for for uh, adults and children, they can create their own books for their entire life with uh, quite templates and also stories of your life. This book was growth uh, over 300% uh, year over year. And also uh, with social media campaign, uh, they were successful for many years already. And also another uh, uh, creative application I like to talk 
uh, here is a tasty cookbook. Not sure about Indonesia. I think in many of countries, uh, foods are quite a big part of the life already. Under COVID-19, it's more essential now. Uh, this is not basically from a publisher. This is from online media outlet. Uh, they wanted to create customized uh, recipe book with uh, under the name of Tasty Cookbook. And they plan uh, only a, a few thousands in the in the first place. But uh, the, this book was very successful. Uh, now it's more than uh, 10,000, uh, 100,000 uh, altogether. And also it becomes to uh, a quite worldwide bestseller. So coming to Asia also uh, now. Can I move to? Uh, now Tasty Cookbook also developed second version uh, after success of uh, Tasty Cookbook. So this is junior version for Tasty Cookbook. So they could they can create uh, their own uh, cookbook with their own uh, recipes for for teenagers and children. So after this, not only book application, also they develop uh, coffee cans and all personalized and, and, and customized uh, products based on this content. So uh, this is one example uh, Indonesian publishers also can think about for the future uh, it, with the power of digital. So not only uh, our product and technology can help your cost saving, also you can think about how you can increase your revenues uh, with uh, for both uh, first titles and also backlist. So also you can utilize all the content, uh, respond to the market in more uh, fast way. I think this is my last part, uh, but I wanted to say uh, in this uh, saying, uh, if you change nothing, nothing will change. So this is a very uncertain time. Uh, year 2020 is very unique year uh, in my entire life. I think uh, same in, in yours as well, but uh, still uh, challenges and opportunity comes together. So I like to, to encourage to explore uh, many, many opportunities with digital uh, in your industry and business. Back to uh, Rick to close. Uh, this is uh, uh, my last part for Thank you. now. Thank you, Sun Young. And yes, the, it's a great saying. I think uh, I was in, uh, in Indonesia um, this time last year. And to think about um, if we would have known what we know now about what was coming in COVID-19. I imagine that we would have all prepared a little differently. Uh, and there certainly are things that uh, we can still do, right? Because I believe that this is going to continue on for a number of months and we this is only accelerating a number of trends that are or are already prevalent in the market. And so um, as HP, I want to reiterate that we, we've been in this business for a while, uh, for, a, for a, a long time, for the past decade. Uh, and we're a trusted partner uh, in the in the entire publishing uh, supply chain. We we partner already with a number of the major publishers around the world. And if we go ahead and we pull up the last two slides, um, I think we can show you know we are we're trusted by book printers as well. Uh, and we do this um, day in and day out. We do it from being able to print tens of thousands of copies all the way uh, down to the Book of One. And in, in the U.S., and we believe in the U.S. And, and Western Europe, we're already printing about over 50% of all the print-on-demand um, books that are being produced today. Um, we're already, uh, they're being produced on HP um, devices, HP presses around the world. Um, and if we could just share the very last slide on uh, what we think ways that we can promote partnership with technology. We really see that there was, there's an opportunity for government um, entities to to promote um, Industry 4.0, um, and uh, the first one is uh, by asking publishers uh, if government can help um, ask publishers to create scalable, sustainable solutions for content um, that will incentivize min uh, minimal inventory. This is um, we know that content is how publishers make money. 
Um, and so, you know, creating a more scalable, a more um, sustainable um, way to access that content, um, anything that government can do to help support um, policies, uh, especially in their um, RFPs uh, requirements, um, is the first thing that they can do. The second thing is supporting print service providers with financing options through either loans or through grants for modernizing their equipment. Uh, we know that a lot of uh, equipment throughout the world um, continues to be uh, antiquated and it really doesn't support uh, the, the technology is, is hundreds of years old, to be honest, is based on um, uh, technology that came from not from this last uh, millennium, but the last century. Really, it's, it's um, so um, as as companies look to create sustainable businesses, um, it's going to be require new investments in technology and new investments in presses. And so offering uh, grants or loans at competitive rates um, is one way for government to participate in, in promoting um, the publishing industry. And the third one I think is really important for Indonesia because we know it's a large industry inside of Indonesia, and that's working with paper manufacturers to promote sustainable papers um, that work with digital printing technology. Um, what's, what's good about our, our presses is that they work with both standard offset medias, um, coded and uncoded, as well as um, there are, they work with uh, specific papers that are designed for either inkjet presses or for um, uh, electrophotography presses like uh, the Indigos as well. So um, supporting uh, paper manufacturers to create papers that work on modern presses is a way that government um, can promote partnership. Um, and with that, um, we um, I want to close the section by saying thank you again to Pack Movie for the invitation, for for Laura for the invitation, um, and to my colleague Sun Young for for sharing a few minutes. We at HP really um, we're committed to the publishing industry, um, and we uh, we wish you the best in 2020 and 2021. Thank you. Informasi terkini menjadi sumber referensi dan inspirasi di setiap aktivitas. Melalui News Video Portal, segala informasi dapat disajikan cepat, akurat, dan lengkap. Dengan kekuatan teknologi digital, Mytcom.id hadir dengan berita pilihan yang dikemas secara menarik. Mytcom.id, digitally inspire people. Sudah 15 menit, masih kejebak macet. Tenang, tenang. Daripada emosi, 15 menit Anda jadi lebih berharga kalau bersama saya. 15 yeah. Minutes, setiap Rabu, jam 6 sore, lewat 45 menit. MediaIndonesia.com hadir dengan opini cerdas dan narasumber kredibel. Mudah diakses, informasi berkualitas ada di genggaman Anda. Klik di browser Anda www.mediaindonesia.com Dan temukan pandangan berbeda Karena fakta bisa sama Sudut pandang boleh beda Mediaindonesia.com Views and News Dalam setiap denyut kota, saya selalu menjadi saksinya. Disiarkan lebih dari 20 televisi jaringan Joe Post Group. Joe Post TV, paling Indonesia.
Kebebasan pers dan gelombang era digital menghadirkan ribuan bahkan jutaan informasi dan data setiap harinya. Beragam data dan informasi berserak di berbagai tempat seiring dengan perubahan dunia yang bergerak begitu cepat. Media-media baru pun bermunculan, namun kualitas informasi seolah tak lagi menjadi prioritas. Bahkan tak sedikit yang abai pada etika jurnalisme. Untuk menjawab tantangan itu, Kata Data hadir sejak April 2012 sebagai portal media di bidang ekonomi dan bisnis. Beragam sektor diulas mulai dari finansial, energi, pangan, hingga industri kreatif dan digital. Artikel mendalam dan komprehensif dengan sajian infografik yang menarik menjadi karakter utama dari Kata Data. Kata Data beritiar untuk terus menyajikan beragam informasi berkualitas untuk kemajuan negeri dan untuk kepentingan bisnis Anda. Kami percaya demokrasi yang sehat tumbuh dari kehadiran informasi dan data yang akurat. Kalau bicara pakai data. Hidup terlalu pendek untuk membiarkan pemikiran-pemikiranmu, ide-idemu terdiam begitu saja. Untuk berubah, kita perlu melangkah. Dan langkah itu lahir dari sebuah inspirasi. Republika. Start moving.